Well, hello, everybody. It is time for the Broncos' first oil change. And let's see. Push the button. We have 4,558 or 59 miles. Okay. And I'm going to walk you through it and show you how it's done as I learn myself. I can tell you from the looking at the manual. I work on a bunch of cars here, so I, I put all my specs right here with a Sharpie. The Bronco takes 5W30 unless you live uh, in winter environments where you're going to be subjected to uh, temperatures way below freezing, then you want to get 0W30. And uh, with the each oil change, I believe in rotating the tires, and we're going to do uh, 66 foot-pounds of torque per spec. And the tires are going to be rotated. Um, no, I wasn't planning on doing this. Let me draw four tires. And there's a spare. And it's a full-size spare with a proper rim. Let me see if I remember this. Um, the spare should be in the mix. So, let's see if I can draw this. This is going to go to the spare. I know that one goes back to there. That one goes up to there. Uh, that's going to go to there, and that's going to go to there, I think. I think that's how it's done. I'm going to double check on that when you have a spare. But you make a circuit. And every tire uh, get, takes its place at every wheel at some point. I'm pretty sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to look, I'm going to look that up. But I'm pretty sure, and that's, of course, that's the spare tire. I'm going to double check that because I haven't, I haven't rotated. I haven't cross-rotated. And uh, these are non-directional tires. If you have directional tires, you cannot do this. Directional, if you have directional tires, they have to be a front-rear rotation. And if you have different size tires in front-rear, then you have to just go left-to-right rotation. But in this case, these are non-directional tires of the same size, so we can do this. Which, this right here is the best kind of tire rotation. Because every tire experiences every position. Um, okay. And... I have, oh, you know what I should put down? According to uh, factory spec, it takes six quarts of oil. I haven't uh, verified that yet, but we're still going to find out. Six QTS. Okay. And here it is. Um, um, synthetic oil is, is required and here is the filter and it's not a standard filter that you would the traditional style filter with its own housing this is a cartridge style filter and you will see how I install that it's actually quite neat it's interesting it's clean it's done from above um, and um, it's a good system I like it Okay, and the drain plug. Always have a spare drain plug around because these drain plugs are plastic. Here, let me bring this over. Uh, Ford uses a plastic drain plug with an O-ring. And while some people uh, believe in, in replacing these drain plugs that are ever used, I don't believe in that. I believe if they're still good, reuse them. But always have one on hand in case it breaks and you need to replace it. And, um, you know, you'll be without a car to go get one if you have a broken drain plug in your hand and no oil in the engine. Always have one. And this should be able to be removed and reinstalled by hand, I'm guessing, because 
I mean, it has a place to put um, a ratchet in, but I think it should be done by hand. I think it should be able to be done by hand. We'll find out. All right. I'm going to throw a blanket down. Here's my... Container. That is uh, organic uh, kitty litter that I use. Uh, I'm going to dump that out first, but I use a, a organic um, corn-based kitty litter for spills. But I don't need that today. I'm going to throw a blanket down and crawl under there. And well, let's do this first. Looks like it might storm. I hope it doesn't rain on me while I'm doing this. I have a mat on the driveway that I normally work, but I don't need that. And fortunately, the Bronco has enough space underneath that I should be able to crawl under there without jacking it up. And you want your Bronco or your car to be on a level surface, not tilted, not pitched or rolled. You want that oil pan to be relatively flat. This is the oil filter housing and the cartridge filter goes inside of here i'll show you how that's done and here's the dipstick i'm going to go ahead and hit pause and remove the dipstick keep it out until i'm done we're going to leave that on until we're drain done draining the oil pan okay first thing we have to do is remove a skid plate that is fastened by four 15 millimeters, 15 millimeter um, bolt. There we go. And this, hit, this skid plate is protecting the oil pan. pretty tight on there. There's two in the front and two in the back. They had, looks like there was possibly some, some kind of thread locker on there. Alright, here's the other one in the front. This is the front one. That was looser. That was a lot looser than the first one. Alright, I'm going to put the phone down and then the two in the rear are there and there. So, you don't need to watch this. I'm going to go ahead and Get those loose and the skid plate slides out towards the rear. All right, I've got the four removed and the skid plate is laying right where it dropped. I ginger, gingerly lowered it and you can see there is the drain plug. It's yellow. The replacement one is orange because it's aftermarket, but... The oil pan is made out of a composite, a thermal plastic um, or composite. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but it's not metal. Um, and so I'm going to I'm going to remove. I'm going to drag this. Hold on, put the phone down. I'm going to drag this good plate out. Set it over here. Okay, let's see if I can reach that frame. All right. All right. Sorry, I'm at an angle, but I'm uh, coming in from the front of the truck of the Bronco, and I got the oil catch base in there, and let's see how easy this is. Uh, oh, see? Okay. It broke free rather easily, and... I am turning it 
And I also, by the way, it was about a half hour ago when I parked this car after having driven it for a couple hours or an hour or so. So the oil's warm. All right, here we go. I've turned it as far as I can go. Got a little bit of oil on me. But all of it's going in the catch basin. Uh, catch basin. I don't know what you call it. Alright, I'm going to sit there and just let that trickle drain for quite some time. I don't know. Oh, it's kind of dark. Alright. Let me get out of here. I'll show you. Got a little bit of oil on me. Oh, shit. It's dripping right on my foot. Alright, there we are. Okay, I'm going to take this inside, give it a little clean. I don't, you know how they used to have a magnet on these things to catch iron filings? I don't think we really have that system anymore. There's the skid plate. You can see nothing's really leaking on it. That's a good thing. But I'm going to give this a good, a good clean and reuse it. And I know that there are some people who might, who believe in maybe maybe putting new drain plugs in. every single time but I don't see the point these things seem to be perfectly perfectly reusable I'm trying to do everything with one hand nice and clean there's a one-handed clean for you All right, I'll let that sit there and dry. And I'm going to get rid of this glove with oil on it. Hang on a sec. All right. So while the oil is draining from underneath, we need to figure out never put your glasses on the ground oh it's a recipe for disaster isn't it guys and gals what do we have here so this is the oil filter cartridge and it does tell you the torque spec on it at least i thought i saw that yes it says uh, torque to 24 plus or minus 2 newton meters so i'm going to need a torque wrench and i need to figure out what size uh socket i need what would you guys guess that thing is here's my finger I don't even want to guess all right I'm gonna hit pause while I gather my torque wrench and figure out what size metric that is okay using a uh, 27 millimeter is what seems to fit I'm gonna loosen the cartridge it feels kind of snug and it continues to feel kind of snug kind of a strange sensation I need to go get a rag or a towel because I don't know what's going to come out of this thing so forgive me for not having that in advance I'll be right back okay I 
feels like it's um, finger tight now, and it is. Take a look down there. what it looks like so let's go ahead and loosen it and pull it up and uh, see what what kind of mess we're going to make and what to expect inside This is what comes out. I'm going to flip it this way so it doesn't leak. And this is what we're left with. Nice and clean. All right. I am. Okay, this is. I'm going to set this right here for now. I'm going to clean that in my parts cleaner. And here is the filter. It's snug on something, but you just pull it right up. This is what we're left with. And I'm just going to toss that in the grass for now. I'll deal with it later. And I've got to tell you folks, that was painless and clean and easy and required one tool. All right. Let me see if this really requires, I mean, this is clean in here. I don't think I need to go clean this in my parts bin cleaner, and I don't want to uh, run the risk of, I don't see any contamination in there whatsoever, and I don't want to run the risk of contaminating my oil. So let's go ahead and get the new filter. Try to make this as few cuts as possible I don't think that there's a um, I think that it's symmetrical on both ends I don't see any difference this is a Ford filter a Ford product and I see zero difference it is symmetrical through and through so I'm going to put the label up because, well, I didn't even notice a label pulling that one out, but I'm going to put the label up. I'm just going to, I'm going to set that in there. I don't think it fits any differently. I'm going to reinstall it exactly the way that I that it came apart. Just like this. And you give it a little push down and then the threads start to engage. And it's ready to tighten with with the ratchet to uh, and I have I have uh, I've got my torque wrench and I have it set for approximately 24 Newton meters. Quite a few threads to go here, so let's just wait to see when it gets snug. Now it suddenly got snug, there are no more threads left. You hear that click? That 
That's it. It's over. And it's in. And now it's drizzling a little bit, so I'm going to hit stop, take my tools inside, and wait for this drizzle to stop. All right, I've cleaned and inspected the factory drain plug. I don't see uh, any reason whatsoever to install the aftermarket when the factory is still perfectly good. The O-ring is perfect. It is clean and pristine. So let's go ahead and put it back in. with my left left hand um kind of want to get I'm going to dip this in the oil now I want to oh yeah there's there's already plenty of oil up there um you want to I'm going to stick this in and turn it and get that get that o-ring pre-lubricated move, right. move this out of the way all right i don't have my glasses on um all right i'm doing this almost blindly okay put it in give it a turn like i have a turn and it clicks and it just clicks i mean look how easy it is okay out click that's it and let me make sure the o-ring is lubed oh my god the o-ring is so lubed no problem at all o-ring lubed now i forgot to bring a towel again but i always like to wipe these areas right here so you don't need to watch that i'm just going to wipe the excess oil off this and off the cross member just to be professional and then reinstall uh Actually, no, I don't want to reinstall the um, skid plate yet until I check for leaks. You see, that's what you got to do. Um, wouldn't it be silly? huh? So I'm going to leave this here, uh, fill the oil up and run it for a while and then check for leaks and then reinstall the oh, three, I'm sorry, the skid plate. All right, that's the sequence, folks. All right. I'm going to hit stop and go grab a funnel and start putting some new oil in. Okay, here's the S5W30. Here's the oil cap, the oil fill cap. That O-ring needs to be uh, slightly lubed. That's where it goes right there. Got a funnel in there ready to rock and roll. You don't need to watch me fill this up. I'm going to go ahead and put, I'm going to put five quarts in there. And uh, turn it on, let it fill the filter, see where we are, see where we stand, and then add the, the six quart accordingly. So let's uh, see how that goes. Okay, five quarts in, putting the oil fill cap on, because if you don't, sometimes that might splatter, the valves might splatter the oil out. I don't know, but I'm not willing to make a mess. Let's start the engine. Well, I guess it won't start. Won't start with the hood up remotely. Okay. Got it. Get in and start it. Okay. All right. We're going to let it run for about a minute or less just to fill the filter. We'll let it fill the filter. That filter takes so little oil. It's not like the big old filters back in the day. It takes so little oil, it's not gonna make an appreciable difference. But the question is, how many quarts is this engine? Five or six. I'm gonna stop it. And now, I don't know where to prop this thing. I'm gonna prop the phone. 
Jeez. Prop it right there. Okay. All right. Let's check the dipstick and see where we stand. I won't be able to show you. I'll just read it out to you. I almost need to stand on something to reach this dipstick here. It's kind of behind one of the turbo, one of the turbo lines. All right. Um, right now, I'm not seeing anything registering. I'm surprised. I thought something would be registering on the dipstick with five quarts of oil in there. That oil is just so clean, but there ain't nothing registering. I just ran my engine with nothing registering on the dipstick. That's five quarts of oil. Uh, yeah, it's going to take all six. Um, let me go get the other one. All right, I'm uh, got the filter, the funnel back in. And I'm going to add all of number six because ain't nothing on the dipstick. I saw a little tiny bit at the very, very bottom, um, but it is going to need all six. Maybe that filter cartridge takes a lot more than I thought. Okay. That's 100%. That's 100% of number six. We'll give it time to weep its way through the engine. Let me check it right now and see if there's anything registering. Uh, yeah, it's registering low. So we'll give it time to make its way through and I'm gonna take the filter out start the engine again don't tell me this takes more than six quarts that would be a shocker because the uh, owner's manual said six was the capacity <sighs> We'll start the engine. Hopefully that phone doesn't fall over. Let's wipe the dipstick one more time. Good gracious. This thing going to take seven quarts. This little old 2.7 liter V6. Needs seven quarts. No, I don't think so. It better take six. Let's see. Uh, it's reading low. I don't know where the camera is on this. I don't know if you can see it. My apologies, but it's still reading low. 
It's on the bottom. It's on the bottom uh, circle. Okay. So I'm going to get up under there and uh, check for leaks and reinstall the uh, skid plate and check the oil again. Give I'm going to give all the oil a chance to settle in and go see if I can muster up another uh, a seventh uh, quart of synthetic 5W30. Holy crap. So there's the first moral for you. Be prepared uh, with an extra quart of oil. Man. What the heck? Uh, ee, oil, 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 oil. I'm going to have to go to the auto parts store. Full synthetic SAE 5W30. I see something down there. The yeah, it's not the same brand. Let me see what I have down here. Yeah, Quaker State. It's unopened. Okay, it's unopened. I don't mind mixing Quaker State with uh, Fram. I don't know why I even have this one. All right, I want to go ahead, just for craps, I'll keep, you, I'll keep you filming here. I'm going to go ahead and add this, because there's no way enough oil is going to trickle down there to go from the empty dot. Yep, this full synthetic is unopened, so it's definitely fresh. Here we go. Quart number seven. Should I add the whole thing? Yeah. No. I added uh, three quarters of it. I'm a little wary. Because this is my first time doing a little change. Oops. Are you still recording? Yeah. This is my first time doing an oil change, and I don't know what to expect. I don't know what this truck needs. You know, once you do it the first time, you're always going to know what to expect in the future. Let me see what we got here. It's creeping up now. You know, the problem is with, not the problem, it's not a problem, but with this synthetic oil, it's so crystal clear and so hard to see and that's why they have those little holes in the dipstick if the hole the hole makes a bubble if the oil is covering it and if the hole is open the oil is not covering it you can tell and um, that three quarters I don't know if you can see it or not that three quarters brought me up from empty to halfway to full so it's going to need the whole quart, so I don't care what the owner's manual said. This Bronco needs seven quarts, not six. Maybe I misread the owner's manual. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. But I done started the engine and idled it for uh, 30 seconds on five quarts oil. Uh-oh. I done a bad thing. A good thing I have a warranty. <sighs> sure, you guys are calling Ford right now. I'm gonna send him this video. Like, hey man, if this guy comes in complaining about his engine, he's the one that screwed it up. I'm sure. All right, we're gonna check it one more time. Here we go. Right on the full line. 
right on the full line. Not any higher, not any lower. It appears that this is a seven quart vehicle. At least my vehicle is. Okay, I'm gonna put the cap back on. I already cleaned it up with a rag, the area around it. Everything's nice and clean. And now I'm gonna go clean the undercarriage and put that skid plate back on. All right. Let's do a final check. Uh, I got the skid plate. back on I'm trying to get this to focus mm -mm, won't focus it's gonna focus on the distant things huh well sorry about that if I come up backdrop right here I don't think it's focusing there we go that oil is so clear, you can't really see it. Let me dip it in there again. I don't know if you can tell. Anyway. We're good. Take this down. Skid play back on. I forgot, I wanted to show you the power steering motor. You know, there's no power steering pump and there's no hydraulic power steering, it's a motor. I know that's the modern tech, but I have not seen one until now, and it's kind of cool, but it's under the skid plate, so I forgot to show you. It's got the active grill. See the motor, uh, motor-operated louvers right there that can open and close, even down here for the intercooler. Okay, that's the oil change. The next thing will be the tire rotation. And like I told you, we got a full-size spare with a with a um an equivalent rim so it's going to be a five tire rotation i'm not going to do that today I'm not going to do it today had enough um but we'll put the dipstick back in and uh go up to the store and buy a bottle of vino doesn't this in this engine amazing all these pipes right here all they are is uh, i'll have to show you sometime i've already traced them out i know what i know what they all do it's not actually quite simple if you know how turbochargers work it's just the plumbing for for turbos. If you were to take out the uh, intake, output side, throttle body side of the turbos, it would look like a standard V6. It's no big deal. It's just a V6. There's the intake manifold right there. Um, there's the computer module. You know, it's it's not... People get intimidated by looking at these engines because uh, it looks like a bunch of plumbing, but it's not... The turbo is kind of getting away, but make things kind of hard to get to. But it's just a V6. It's just a V6. There's one of the turbos down there. The other one's kind of cockeyed in, in another direction and kind of hard to identify. It's on the other side. But it's just an engine. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. I hope that was helpful to somebody. Uh, it was my first time uh doing an oil change it's very very easy uh now that i've done it i could probably do it in about 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes with all the tools here i learned that i needed seven quarts hmm interesting all right thanks for watching folks ciao